Hallelujah. We bless God for who he is. Shama, this morning. I thank you. I thank you, God. The word is blessed. The house is blessed. And thank you for the privilege to serve your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I thank you for my pastor. I thank my God for our pastors, for the pastors of the Streams Church. Hallelujah. I, I, uh, I laughed when I got the text from you, Pastor. I remember something Pastor Johnson said at Eastern Star. He was like, if you don't have a word in your back pocket, you're not a preacher. So I was like, Lord, what's in my back pocket? I don't wear jeans too much to have back pockets. But I believe the word I had to literally go take a ride, Sister Kelly, and Minister Terry, and I was like, okay, what does the Lord want for today? So the word of the Lord comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And the title of this text is Vision Required. The vision required. Glory to God. Glory to God. And the word of the Lord says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, Amen. I'll read it so we can use our time wisely. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined. It has not entered into your heart the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Anybody love Jesus this morning? Anybody love God? No eye. Interesting. It doesn't say eyes. You only need one good one. Uh huh. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts, into the mind, to even imagine the things that God has in store for you because you love him, because you love him. His love is a given, right? He sent his son to die for our sins. His love is a given. But to obtain this text for those who love him, Often we quote these scriptures and we don't keep them in context, Minister Pastor Sharon. We say, well, if you, you know, God loves you. But sometimes our love for him is required. It's required. He said, so as I was considering this thing called vision, and I know we're coming to the end of 2020, but God really started dealing with me about vision again. And he said, as we enter 2020, many of us have been petitioning God, praying to God about this thing called perfect vision, Pastor. Perfect vision. And he said, and so as I was driving, I said, Lord, but so many are saying, I didn't see that. I didn't see a perfect vision that came from God in 2020. And he said, okay, let's talk about this thing. And we were told that 2020 represented perfect vision. And perfect vision, everything that we wanted was coming to us this year because this was the year of perfect vision. How many of us heard that prophecy, those words preached, those words declared? We saw it all on social media. But yet something happened around March 13th. Something happened and we saw schools closing. And shortly after, we saw businesses closing and doctor's offices closing. And people were like, wait a minute now, this don't look like no perfect vision year. And I remember around that time, God had me uh, make a call to my um, optometrist. I said, I need to understand the clarity of something because I've been told all of my life that perfect vision was 2020. I said, help me. Is that true? She said, no, it's not. I said, it's not? She said, no, uh-uh. I said, okay, let's talk about it. So many of us, we accepted what we had been told, that 2020 was perfect vision. So when 2020, the year 2020 came in, we aligned that with 20 slash 20 and said, it is so, perfect vision. But what we did not know was that this virus thing was going to come in this perfect vision year. I'm going somewhere, y'all. And so 
this unclassified, unclear thing that came into the earth. And now thousands of people, unfortunately, have died and millions of people have been diagnosed. And here we are with this thing that they called corona initially. And so I said, okay, Daddy, let's walk through this. See, that's what I call God. And so put that vision, put, uh, Habakkuk 2 says, write the vision, make it plain, so that when others read it, they can run with it. He said, he said, this is the thing. Habakkuk had prayed to God. He had prayed to God. And God answered him and said, okay, Habakkuk, uh, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he that sees it, he that reads it can run with it. For the vision, somebody says vision, is yet for an appointed time in the future, and it hurries towards a goal. <laughs> it hurries towards a goal. Okay, he said, it's hurrying towards a goal. He said, and even though it, 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 it will not deceive or disappoint, though it tarries, wait for it earnestly for it, because it will surely come. But wait a minute, you just told me to wait for it. It's going to tarry, but you just told me it was going to... Okay. Then he says it has an appointed time, and I think that down there, what does that say, delay? One translation says, though it is delayed, wait for it, it will not delay. Come on, God, quit confusing us. What do you mean? You just said that though it delays, I think this is uh, the word version, it says, though it delays, wait for it, it will not delay. It's surely going to happen, Pastor. So what does that mean? That means that's your time that you're saying it's late, the vision is late. That's your time. Though it's delayed, though it tarries in your mind because it's late, it should have happened. It's November <laughs> and it should have happened. Matter of fact, none of this stuff that happened this year shouldn't have even happened because this was the year of perfect. Nah, man. Come on, God. We need your help. We need your help. So, so here we are with this vision. And so we quoted this scripture. We believed Apaka. And here we are in November, and we're still waiting on things to happen. How many of us have a vision for our life? Come on, show me some hands. How many have a vision for our lives, for our ministries, for our businesses, for our marriages? And we're still waiting for a healing. So there are two things, however, and if you could put that slide up about vision. He said, there are two things people didn't tell you when they was prophe prophesying. I was about to say something else. Um, when they was prophesying, two things they didn't tell you. They didn't tell you that 2020 was not perfect vision. So what is perfect vision? There's a difference between sight and vision. Okay? Sight is outward. It's out there. It's outward. And it's natural. Right? It's actual. But we need sight to manifest vision. You need it to manifest vision. You got to see it to see it. But seeing it starts up here. Okay, so vision is, though it's often in a conscious state, and when you dream, a vision is unconscious. Okay? So he said, but it starts within. Vision starts within. It starts up here. It can start in your heart, it can, but it's always led by the spirit. Now the question becomes, what spirit? <laughs> you got to know what spirit is speaking to you. God's vision or dream is spiritual. It's spiritual. And so often your vision becomes your desire. This is why you can't shake it. There's a vision for the kingdom center. That God has given Pastor Hill. That's why he can't shake it. Doesn't matter what it looks like. Doesn't matter what it sees. I just saw that Fantasia and her husband got pregnant. She'd been trying for years. But she had a vision. And she started praying. And now the womb has spoken. I couldn't shake it. I was going to keep doing what I need to do. Whatever the vision is, you can't let go of it. Vision. Vision becomes the desire of our hearts. You know why? Because it's spiritual and it comes from God 
And that's why the desires of our heart, when you really understand that text, the desires of your heart comes from God. Who just has a desire to lose 50 pounds? Nobody got no desire to do that. I got desire to go meatless. Who does that? Who has just a desire to change the way you eat, Kelly? What? Jacob. Anybody got that? That comes from God. So he puts the desire in your heart. So this thing called 2020 vision. What is there really anything that is a perfect vision? So let's talk about it. 2020 means you can see, I can see close 20 feet. And the second 20 means I can see a far off 20 feet. But what if you can see, Pastor Carol, 40 feet afar off? There's no such thing as perfect vision. It's relative. It's, uh, it depends on the person. Now, the truth is when you have a vision from God, this is why sometimes you're peculiar to people. Because you way up there seeing some of the other people back here at 10 feet. They, get, they got 20, 10. They got 20, 10 because they write, this is all they can see. Come on, somebody, what's in front of them? But you way up there, Sister Minister, Terry. You way up there. This is why those of you who have prophetic gifts, you can't get frustrated. They don't get it. They don't see it. I said that three months ago. I said that a year ago. But that's because your vision is ahead. So we came into this year, people telling us this was the perfect year of vision, and we expected God to manifest it all because this was the year of 2020 vision. Some of you stop praying because God just going to do it all. Some of us, the pandemic, I know we shut down for a season, and many of us had different reasons why we weren't. When the doors reopened, we come, couldn't come. I was one of them for a minute. But the thing is, some of you just stop. You, they're not even watching online. Amen to everybody who's watching online. Because you got distracted. Let's talk about the next slide. The second thing nobody told you was what corona really meant. Mm hmm Corona means a glorious light. That should just make somebody shout right there. That should make somebody get real happy, brother minister. Because Jesus said to me, I'm the glorious light. I'm the glorious light. I am the way, the truth, light, life. I'm the way, I'm the door, I'm the sheep, I'm the sacrifice. He said, I'm the glorious light. Why are you all giving this virus so much attention? I, I, let me give a public service announcement. Wear your mask. But what we did, we got afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Let your vision override the spirit of fear today. And so, corona. And I said, okay, God, that's the second thing. They didn't tell us about this thing that was happening in 2020 and what this really meant. I said, okay, so what, okay, this is when an eclipse happens. Corona is the light behind the moon when an eclipse happens. How does that happen? I wish I had something I could hide behind that y'all couldn't see me. But what happens is the moon obscures the sun. And we have an eclipse and you lose sight of the sun. The S-U-N. But the Lord said, spiritually, what has happened, we have lost sight of the S-O-N. Because we've let things obscure him. What did we let obscure him? Our jobs, losing our jobs, corona, people getting diagnosed, people dying. All those are concerns. And he said he would perfect everything that concerns you. We're not heartless. We're going to care when we hear about people getting diagnosed, people transitioning because of this virus. But he said, stop calling it Corona because I'm the glorious light. Words and have power and words have meaning and we place the wrong words on things and we un don't understand why things get obscured. Sin has obscured the sun. And what happens when there's an eclipse? What comes over the land? Darkness. Darkness. So when the light 
of God is obscured in your heart, in your life, darkness, darkness comes. So these are the things that those who were prophesying and those who were sending messages. And, and so God just wanted me to stop right here and just invite you to go read Jeremiah and uh, just talk about when people prophesy things to just make you feel good. Yeah, read them scriptures. When people insert, and we all have been guilty, when we insert our personal convictions and our personal uh, conclusions and opinions and make it doctrine and say that it's the word of the Lord, it's not the word. If I wish I had, I had my Bible and left it in the car. If it's not in the word, and at least one word <laughs> is not explained in context. Don't take it out of context. Keep it in context. If that word does not apply to what they're saying in context, it ain't God. It's not him. So we cannot obscure the light of God with our opinions and our personal convictions. It's my personal conviction to wear five inch heels when I ain't saying that's what every other woman is supposed to do. Are y'all understanding? That's my personal conviction. But it cannot become doctrine or prophetic messages. And we say that it's God. Ah, God, I love you today. So here we are in 2020, and these visions have not manifested. Somebody say, not yet. Not yet. You see, sight, 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 sight is not always attached to vision. Sight is not always attached to vision, but vision has to have sight. Has to. You won't see it manifested. Now, I know what somebody's saying, well, what about somebody who's blind? I know y'all, I know how, I hear you. It's all good. But they still have sight. They have braille. They have other ways that they're led to get to where they want to be. So you need sight. My, my grandmother used to say, it's the mind, it's the heart's mind, it's the mind's heart. The mind's sight. You have mind sight. That's what she used to say. I didn't know what that meant till now. You have mind sight. And so we, we can see things all the time, but vision must have sight for there to be manifested, manifestation. Vision is required for you to see in the spirit. The vision of God, you have to have the spirit of God to receive his vision. You got to have the spirit of God to hear his voice because no other voice will you follow. I pray, I pray because y'all took a little minute on that. Let's talk about why is 20, since we're still in 2020, right? Why is 20 so important? There's some things I want to run, I want to give to you. And it says, 20 still rep represents a cycle of life. It's a cycle of life. 20 is a period of waiting, and it is the most harmonious number of balance. Why is that? Because 10 is whole. 10 is whole. And so you have 20, and it is the most Harmonious number of balance. Find balance. You got a few more. Yet. Matter of fact, we got 33. Isn't that awesome? We got 33 more days in this year. Find balance. Get balance. Yeah, yeah. He says, is, uh, another definition is 20 is waiting on what is, this is going to bless uh, uh, Terry and Jacob and Kelly. 20 is the number of waiting on what is, what is needed and wanted to finish a thing. What is needed and what is wanted to finish. You got projects. You need something. You want something to just that one little piece so you can say, I checked it off. Go find out what is it? What is it that is wanted and needed to restore that relationship? What is needed and wanted to make that business go to the next level? What is needed and wanted in your ministry, in your life, and in your health for something to be finished? How about just take your medicine regularly like the doctor said? Novel. Yeah, yeah. Another thing about 20 is that it is when you come into your own, it's the 20-year-old who ain't quite legal, 
but you're coming into your own, but you still need mom and daddy. It's, it's coming into your own. It's Jacob. It's when Jacob had served, um, Laban for 20 years to get what was wanted and needed. It's coming into your own. 20, 20, 20 is also, um, so, so King, uh, his name, Art, 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 say it. Mm hmm. Artaxerxes. Thank you. He was in his 20th year. This is very critical. He was in his 20th year and it was that year that Nehemiah came to him and said he wanted to rebuild the wall. 20 will cause you to do something that was not on your agenda to do. It is a shifting. 20 brings a shifting. 20 brings a shifting that changes your heart. The king's heart was also changed in the 20th year of his service. Because what we don't know is what we forget in our study is that before that, he was the one who stopped the wall from being built in the first place. Then when Nehemiah came back and said, Bible says he was sad and, and low in his spirit, and the king was like, what's wrong? And the Bible says that Nehemiah was scared to even talk. And so he praised the king before he opened his mouth and said what he wanted. And the king said, how can I help you? He had a change of heart. It's some things we got to change our heart and our mind about. You got 33 days. You got 33 days. What is it that you need to shift and change your mind about? I always tell people anything can happen in three days. If Jesus can get up from the grave, anything can happen in three days. Good God Almighty. And you got 30 more to work with. Come on, somebody. You got 33 days. What do you need to change your heart about? It's the 20 is the place of in between. It's like, okay, yeah, I'm not 21 yet. I just said that a little earlier. I'm not 21 yet, but I'm in between. Right? They, they want to be grown, but they ain't grown. They think they know something, but they don't really know nothing. My spiritual mother, Mother Alexander, said, what you know will fit in a them bowl, and there'll still be room at the top. Yeah, yeah. So, so 20. 20 is the age, hear me, 20 was the age that... The children of Israel, everybody over the age of 20 had to die before they could enter into the holy place. Listen, there's, there's blessings, there's favor still available to you this year. What haven't you asked for? What haven't you asked for? Nehemiah asked for it. Listen, I want to go back. I want to help build a wall. And what they had been stopped for years, he did it in 52 days. What is it that you, the raise, what haven't you asked for? The loan, because you want the house, you need the car. What is it that fear, because the Bible says Nehemiah was afraid. He, he was scared to ask. Go in praising the banker. That's a nice suit. I just love banking here. That ain't manipulation, that's wisdom. What, what is it? You got 33 days, beloved. You got 33 days. So, I ask you, where are you? Which one of these is you? The cycle of life, the decision you need to make, coming into your own, the heart change, it's time to cross over, it's time to cross over and do a new thing. Which one of these is where you land? Are you the person that's waiting for the reward because you've been waiting right? That's me. That's me. Where are you on this scale of 20? Somebody say 33 days. God wants you to get in where you fit in because vision requires it. You can't move forward without vision. Let's be clear. Nehemiah had a vision. No eye had seen it. No ear had heard it. Neither had it entered into anybody's heart before Nehemiah said, I'm going to go. His heart was broken at the fact that Jerusalem have fallen apart. What breaks your heart? What breaks your heart? I can't talk about kids in cages. I can't. I can't talk about kids being out of school because maybe they're at home with their abuser. I can't. I can't talk about that. 
the thought of it all day, Kelly. They're with them all day. Maybe they go to work, but when they come home, they don't have the escape of school, Sharon. Some of them aren't eating. We know what free lunch and free breakfast does for kids. So that's what pulls at my heart. What pulls at my heart are men being whole, men knowing their value and their worth. That pulls at my heart. And so what pulls at your heart, you will go and ask for what you want. You'll stand in the gap for the stuff that pulls at your heart because you can't shake it. You think it's your vision. It wasn't your vision. It's what God has placed in your heart. Nobody want to deal honestly, naturally with middle school kids, which is who I serve. What single woman desires to have a ministry for men? We know the ridicule that could come from that. That's God's desire. So if you can't shake it and it don't make sense, Nehemiah was fine being the cupbearer. What y'all talk about? He was tasting everything. He was good with that. But he said, I must need go just like Jesus. So I'm going to bring it on in here. Understanding vision requires you to make a decision today. There's a vision that you have for your life, something you have not finished. And God wants you to know that your vision still stands. It still stands. It has not left. It has, you have not been denied. Hallelujah. You might have put it down, but it keeps coming back. God said your vision still stands. What isn't standing is you. God said, get up. Walk in your vision. You got 33 days. There is something that everyone under the sound of my voice, via on the web, on the internet, watching live, Facebook, wherever they're watching, and everyone in this room, there is not a person in here that God has not given you a vision. Partly because there's not a person in here that does not have a purpose. Your purpose is often tied, your vision is often tied to your purpose. It's either an assignment or it's a purpose. And God is ready for us to move. There's an appointed time for all of us to do what God has put us here to do. And vision is required for it to be accomplished. I want us to consider something. I, want you, I was going to give you another mask to put over your eyes. And I thought about my nephew, Jordan, who is diagnosed with autism. And that's what his life is like every day. Uh, because every stimulus that comes into his life keeps him off, can cause him to get off balance. What he sees, what he hears, what he tastes, all of that. And he has no way of understanding like we have filters to push it out, Pastor Tyra. Because it all comes in and that's why you'll see autistic children flailing their arms or they'll scream or they'll run. But what I want you to do is ask yourself, what yet has not your eye seen? What is something? Maybe you were supposed to go somewhere. Disappointment has come in this year. You had a birthday to celebrate. You had an anniversary to celebrate. You had plans. You had a cruise. You were going to the Bahamas. You were going somewhere. But your vision, the vision you had has been obscured. It has been delayed, but somebody say, not denied. This will pass. This will pass. And God said, use this time to get balanced, to get redirected, to get focused. You got 33 days. That should excite somebody. Are y'all smiling behind y'all masks? Oh, okay. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm smiling. I got 33 days. So I want you to kind of. Think, what is it you haven't seen yet? What is it you haven't heard yet? I told someone, I wish I would have went. I wish I would have saw Michael Jackson in concert. So I could have seen and heard him live. I heard he was amazing. There are people, there are things that you need to hear somebody say to you. Or someone needs to hear you say, I love you. I forgive you. You got 33 days. So I'm going to challenge you. If you could just put your hand over your eyes. And we're going to end here.
Consider the text of this message. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has imagined, it has not entered into the hearts of man, and you are that man, that woman, the thing that God has prepared for you. What do you believe God has prepared for you? Does, has he prepared a debt-free life? What do you want to do to move in that direction in the next 33 days? Has he prepared a loving, caring, intimate, affectionate marriage for you? This is for those who are already married. What do you do in the next 33 days to see that manifested? Has he prepared for you a spouse? What do you do? What are you going to do to prepare? Has he prepared an increase? Are you willing to go into your manager and say, I know we all get raises, but I need something a little more than 3% because I've done this and I've done that. What is it that God has prepared for you? Matter of fact, I just said it. He said he would perfect everything that concerns you. He will, he will, pre he will prepare even a table before you in the presence of your enemies. What has God prepared for you? One of the things, and eyes have not seen, keep your eyes covered for me. Ears have not heard, it has not entered into the hearts of man. You know what he doesn't say? No heart has not felt. God needs you to feel. Feel it until you see it. Feel it until you see it. That house, feel it. Until you see it, till you see it, and feel it till you get it. See yourself walking around in it. See yourself in your walk-in closet or your prayer closet. See it. See the street you wanted to live on. See it. Feel it. And see it till you see it so you can feel it and you can live it. No I, not even yours, your mother's, I know she prayed. Your grandmother, I know she prayed, but no eye has seen, no ear has heard. Now take your other hand and put it over one ear. No eye has seen. You just need one. You just need one good ear. You just need one eye. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. What is God showing you in your mind right now? When you get a vision of something God is showing you, I want you to stand to your feet. Is he showing you that house, that car, that marriage, that job, the next place you're to travel? What is it he's showing you that's for you, that he's preparing for you? Oh, my God. Is it owning your own business? Is it writing a book? Is it traveling abroad? Is it serving children? What is it that he's shown you? No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into your heart. What God has in store for you. It's stored up for you. It's stored up for you. And he wants you to believe it. I got to see it till you see it. So you can feel it and you can have it. This is the will of the Lord. God said your vision shall come to pass. And when you see it and you're on your feet, start praising God like you already got it. Thank him. Hallelujah. I'm debt free. I owe no man nothing but love. Hallelujah. My husband loves me as Christ loved the church. My wife is submitted unto me because I'm submitted unto God. God has not only prepared a house for me in heaven. Hallelujah. There's a house for me in the earth. Healing is mine in the name of Jesus because it's the children's bread. Glory to God. That addiction, that stronghold is broken. What is the thing that God has prepared for you? Those of us who struggle to get a vision in our mind's eye, you got too much on your mind. God said, lay it down. He don't sleep. He don't slumber. Why you up? Why you worrying? Get a vision.
and agree with God. Agree with God and agree with your vision. My God. Hey, God. Oh, God. Jesus. It's a bullshit. Mm. Mm. Agree with God. Hey, God. Agree with God. Agree with the vision of God. What is it? What is it? Again, he came against you. He tried to attack you, but you're still here. He came. That song says you came against my home. You came against my marriage. Good God almighty. You came against my money, but I'm still here because there's a vision that awaits an appointed time in your heart and in your life. And so we thank God today. Vision is required for you to get to the next level in your life just tell you to get from Indianapolis to Chicago and I'm not telling you how to get there. I'm not telling you what road to take. You about take 69. You can get there that way. You can take four, the long way, 465 to 69 to 94 and come back around. You can do that. You can take 31 to get to Chicago. But vision has direction. And you can't get that direction without being connected to God. He's the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your pathway. He is the order of your steps. We cannot hear me in these 33 days. Don't lean to your own understanding. But in all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. I wish we could walk around this room and just have everybody lean in a particular direction. Whichever way you lean is the way you're going to walk. God needs for you to trust God in this season. You got 33 days. What you going to work on? Vision requires it. Vision is required for you to get to where God has for you to be. Lift up your hands. Daddy God, we thank you. We love you and we trust you. And we bless your name. The person that I keep hearing in my spirit that's afraid to go and uh, do the investigation about getting a house, he said, do it in these 33 days. He said, do it. It's time for you to go to the next level. You didn't ran out of space. That's what he said. You didn't ran out of space. You need to go ahead and do what God has told you to do. Glory to God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a promotion. I don't somebody in technology, and I know Tyler's in technology, but there's somebody else in technology. And the Lord is saying that promotion is yours. Just ask for it. You've proven yourself. You've proven yourself. It could be in this, I, I, it's in this space, but it could be someone else oh, watching over the internet. But God said the promotion is yours. Matter of fact, you have a creative idea. This is somebody totally different. You have a creative idea. Is that you, Tyler? Yeah, you have a creative idea. And God said, man, go tell him. <laughs> go tell him. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, what's it called, uh, Sharon, when you put your, um, your um, it's not a copyright, trademark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Creative idea. Amen. I thank you. Let's praise him like we already have it and it's already done. Your vision is coming to pass somebody say my vision is coming to pass I've waited I've waited and I waited right and it's coming to pass amen God bless you come on one more time let's give God some praise for his word for the truth and you will know and you will know the truth, and the truth will what? Make you free and set you free. The truth, the truth. As Dr. Tate was ministering, and she was ministering, what came to me, I believe the Holy Spirit just was revealing to me, that we're in the middle of a pandemic. A pandemic means an outbreak of a dis-ease an outbreak of a dis-ease and before we entered into the pandemic we did have dreams come on things that God had given us things we were working towards but when the pandemic showed up and this is the thing that I just really heard in the spirit God said 
there are some things through this pandemic that you've laid aside and thought, well, maybe, maybe it's not going to happen. Maybe I won't pursue that because you're in a dis-ease. You're in a dis-ease. I'm no longer comfortable with what I was holding on to before because I've been challenged by the pandemic. But when you preached that word on today, there was something that just jumped in my spirit that God said was saying, tell the people, bring it back. Bring it back into forefront. Don't let the pandemic, don't let the dis-ease keep you from still laying claim to things I've told you, things I've shown you, and things that I promised you. Come on, don't be dis-ease. Don't be dis-ease. Don't be dis-ease. Distracted from what God has already promised you. Bring it back. Come on, say it. Bring it back. Say it again. Bring it back. Bring it back to the forefront. Because once this thing blows over, once it blows over, come on, you got to, you, you, my God, I, I just saw a vision of something. It's like when the wind came and you were covered with a blanket and, and the wind came, but the wind came and it passed and it blew the blanket off and whatever you were holding on to is what you still had what you still had. Don't let this pandemic cause you to lose the grip on what God promised you before it showed up. Amen, somebody. Don't let it, don't let it, don't let it cause you to lose the grip on the promise that God gave you, the word that he gave you. Hold fast to it because when it blows over, when it blows over, whatever you're holding on to, and that is it, that's faith. Whatever you're holding on to, is your faith that I'm not going to let it go even in the midst of the storm even in the midst of this dis-ease when it blows over I'm still going to hold fast to it thank you for that word Dr. Tate God prompted some things in my spirit I, can I be transparent some things that I said well maybe through the pandemic you know well maybe it's time for me to just let go of this so just go ahead and just kind of refocus on something else but I heard as you were ministering this morning, God said, bring it back. Hold on to it and wait. I'm not through yet. A pandemic does not scare God. I said a pandemic does not scare God. Hold on to it. This storm will pass over. This storm will pass over. Hold on to it. Grip it. Grip it. Grip it. Grip it. My God, thank you for that word this morning. Ah, bless you, God. What a word, what a word, what a word. When it's over, Jesus said, when I come back, am I going to find faith in the earth? When this pandemic is over, am I going to find faith in the earth? Are you still going to be holding on to what I gave you before it started? Or did you allow the uproar in politics, the distractions through a pandemic, to cause you to believe that it's over, bring it back. Put it in focus, back in focus again. What a word this morning. Vision is required. Vision required. Vision required. Will you stand on your feet? Glory to God. As you stand on your feet, Thank you for taking us through that exercise. Amen. Close, close an eye and an ear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My God, what you do. And, and you were so right in that word when you're saying when we started the year off and we were saying 2020 and the word was going forward and we were holding on to some things. This is 2020 vision year and we let a pandemic throw us off. Come on. But God said, no, it's still the same. Thank God for greater vision. Thank God for greater vision. You spoke something. You spoke something and I received it. Amen. Concerning the kingdom center. The kingdom center vision and when you had a stand 
and I just I saw that thing that refreshed and, and just renewed. Oh, Jesus, glory to God. The vision is yet for an appointed time. It's yet for an appointed time. Glory to God. And that time might be after the storm comes or after the pandemic happens. But when it speaks, it's going to speak and it will not lie. It will come to pass. It will come to pass. What a word. What a word. What a word for us. Say, come on, open your mouth. Say, I got vision. I've got purpose. God put it in me. Whatever he promised me, whatever he promised me, he will bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass. I see it. I hear it. I speak it. I believe it. It shall come. Although it tarry, wait for it. Woo! My God, what a word to get us get us ready for the balance of these last 33 days in 2020 amen i'm encouraged i'm encouraged thank you again dr tate for that powerful message vision require vision require i know we have some first time guests with us on today if you're a first time guest will you just wave your hand you're a first time the first time you you visited with us amen god bless you and I know, I already know that these are individuals that were part of the journey that you were on, amen, over the last several weeks. And uh, she's been telling me about it and just been pumped and excited about the experience that she went through. And uh, I know that there was some love in that because y'all showed up this morning in a pandemic with your mask on in the service. And we just welcome you to the Streams Church. We got a gift for you on the way out. Stop at the Usher Station on the way out. We have a special gift for our first timers uh, that's come out on today. So glad to see you. Amen. This has been rich. It's been good as we stand. Anything I'm not forgetting, anything special. Uh, I just want to let you know as you look at your online newsletter, Streams Church, if you got uh, email and text, you should be getting the online newsletter every Sunday. You need to be reading that for some of the upcoming events. We just finished the, the Thanksgiving Hour of Thanks, had a wonderful Zoom experience with that. We had some gift cards that we're giving away uh, through that, had some fun with some Bible trivia for Thanksgiving, and we heard testimonies of thanks by the members. We had a wonderful, refreshing time, Thanksgiving morning, amen, for one hour. Now, in December, in December, as we approach Christmas on December the 20th, that's in our newsletter, online newsletter, Sunday, December the 20th in the afternoon, we're going to have our Streams family Zoom Chris Christmas. Zoom just ended our whole vocabulary, amen. It's just turned things around. But our Streams family, Zoom Christmas, we're going to have some more fellowship and more some more funds. We got some giveaways we're going to do, uh, giveaway during that. Uh, we're going to give away a flat screen TV. Something else I found, I love my favorite things, is uh, uh, the cell phone. It's a cell phone cleaner. Y'all seen that advertised? It's got the infrared light and you put the phone in and it actually cleans your cell phone and anything else that you want uh, just disinfected and sanitized. We're going to give one of those away going to give a Keurig away. So y'all need to make sure you're on. We're going to be getting with the families of the streams and uh, different families. We want you to give your own presentations. If you want to sing a song, amen, your family wants to dance, whatever you want to do uh, on Zoom, uh, get ready on December 20th because we're going to do that. We're going to have some more uh, Christmas Bible trivia. We're just going to have some fun, y'all. Is it okay to laugh and smile through the pandemic? <laughs> amen. So we're going to do that with our family Zoom. Uh, write that down and look at your newsletter. Put it on your calendar and make sure that you get that. I think that's it. Again, we're remembering the Bateman family. As man, What a wonderful, wonderful celebration of life service we had for Beth and Bateman. Praise God. I, I, it could not have gone any more perfect, especially with Beth herself with the voiceover giving her own eulogy what what a blessing that was and certainly we're standing in uh in, in the gap 
uh, for our sister, Sister Rita and her family, amen, in Tampa as her mom has transitioned and gone on to be with Jesus. And again, we want to let you know you are, we just overflow you with love and the blessings of God and your family know that you already know that God is with you, but know that your strange family is with you as well, walking you through this season. Amen. Well, it's time to go home, y'all. It's I know y'all don't want to go, but you got to go. You have to go home. We got to let you go. Amen. So just lift your hands if you would. Stay safe. Stay safe.